Experiment. Explore. Enjoy. Hey, Richard Nickel. Aren't you on our podcast sometimes from time to time? I am on your podcast from time to time. It's very strange to see you in person face to face. But I have to say, it's always a lovely experience. Isn't it weird? Isn't it's, it weird? It's but it's weird. also good. Uh, <laughs> lovely to see you. So, um, exciting news. You've been trailing this for a little while and we now get to see this in the flesh. So this is the new Voltage Lab 2. This is the Voltage Lab 2. Now, this is something that's been five years in the making. Uh, we started working on this the day that we launched the original. Uh, everyone asked us immediately with the original, aren't you going to make more? Aren't you going to make more? And there was some technical reasons why we couldn't. And we thought, well, if we have to fix those couple technical reasons, let's just add a couple things and tweak a couple things there. And we thought that won't take very long at all. And of course, here we are five years later. Yeah. And we are finally ready to show the Voltage Lab 2. But I assure you, uh, it is worth the wait. This is something that I am so proud of. And I've got a little patch you can hear for a second. So, is that actually the Tiger or something that's slightly different? It's it's uh, the same oscillator uh, cores that we have in the Tiger, but what we've added around that is is really brand new. A lot of it's brand new in synthesis in general, but certainly for the Voltage Lab 2, this is uh, expanded greatly on the Taiga and the original Voltage Lab. And I could run you through sort of the hits of it real fast. We have the scope here. You can sort of see we have, hopefully you can see with it's so bright out today. It's so bright, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get my angle. Yeah, there we go. Okay, you can see we have a saw wave going there. And what I can do is I can manipulate the top and half bottom half of that and we can listen to just that so you have new ways of manipulating waveforms these you haven't been able to do in synthesis before where you can manipulate the top and the bottom of the waveforms independently Interesting. we could also offset it and then of course that runs through our six stage wave folder giving you all that chunky sound. Oh, nice. So this has two of those oscillators as opposed to the Tiger on three, right? That's what... Exactly. The diff one of the key differences is the oscillators in this are completely different from each other. So that's laboratory oscillator, one with the wave folder and the circuit we call center clipping where you have independent control. The second oscillator, the laboratory oscillator two, has something that we're calling pulse symmetry. And I can bring that one up. Pulse symmetry, sounds promising. <laughs> <laughs> That one's doing this lead sound here. So well, let me explain a little bit what's going on and I can actually, I can even move the oscilloscope so we can see it as well, which will help. We can listen to it. So now we're looking at the oscilloscope here for this waveform. And you can see we have standard pulse width. I'm going to pull out the pitch here. We have our pulse width. But we also have this extra step in there. Yeah. So we can play with those in very, very interesting ways. Let's see if I'm, ah, no, here we go. Sorry about this. Now we can see it. There we go. Oh, so it's like a stepped PWM. Exactly, and then you have control over where that step is in addition to the pulse width itself. And by manipulating them in different ways and by modulating them, you get sort of an a, a, uh, additional palette of what would be traditional pulse width sounds, but you have a much larger palette of how of uh, control over the harmonics on those, which is very, very nice. That tied to this reflection circuit, 
which essentially folds the bottom half of the wave up over the top half. So we have our sine wave here and you can see it folds up and now it's double frequency. So we can do that with all of the waveforms. You can fold the frequency up. Now what we're hearing is a little bit different because I ran out of jacks down here, but um, we're hearing the bass waveform. When you do a saw, a saw, it forms into a triangle wave. We could, you can hear what that sounds like. So that's a nice way to control the harmonics. So this reflection search, it's also very new, but the pulse symmetry circuit is something that our engineer came up with. And it really does some add some really interesting bits to sort of the mountain of synthesis knowledge that's out there. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it's like, it's almost, it's complex oscillator territory and using the oscillator shape for, for much more of a timbrel variation that you would normally sort of associate with a filter, right? Exactly, exactly. So the idea is to start with smaller, simpler waveforms and then add harmonics to them and innovate, you know, that would be traditional West Coast synthesis is what, what we're really expanding on here. Now that tied with, again, what would be a traditional West Coast voice so we have our function generators, which can be envelopes or they can be LFOs, they can be slew generators, clock dividers. There's a, a never ending list of what you can do right. with those. Uh, then we have uh, some general purpose tools here. We have some uh, mixing style. Uh, this is an amplifier, so you can go 10X that has soft clipping on it. So you can blow out, get a nice overdrive sound. You have a 10 verters two dynamics controllers so you can do if you want to do stereo or if you wanted to do uh, two independent voices using the oscillators you can yep. absolutely do that or one thing that I've been using them for a lot recently is just using them as a filter in a VCA because if you put this in low pass gate mode really what you're doing is filtering the sound yeah so as you open it up you're opening those harmonics just like on a low pass filter when you close it you're closing them so use the first one for a filter with resonance and then the second one with your vca right and gotcha. there you go so you can still get all those traditional east coast style sounds um but you're just sort of doing it backwards i suppose uh but that what that does is that opens it way up and then at the end here we have our florist which is a flanger chorus effect. A florist, did you a say? A florist. Florist. Oh, nice. I like that. In America, we That's have... That's a new uh, word. I, I always up for new words in synthesis. Okay. Yeah, in America, we have uh, florists on every corner selling flowers. So, um, And I like the idea that flanger, chorus, flanger, chorus, kind of sounded like florist to me. Okay. So that's what we came up with. And then we have our echoes. Now the echoes is very different than what's in Taiga. It goes to about twice the length of Taiga. Oh Tyga. yeah, good. That's yeah, right. so it goes to about a half second. And then also you can use the, the voltage coming out of the attenuverter to go in there and bump it up to almost a second. Now it's not super pretty in a second, but it does add this grit and this I like uh, that because nice lo-fi delay effect to it. That's great right, because that was always a little bit, it just wasn't quite long enough. You'd think, oh, I've got a sequence running, I want it to bounce, and it wasn't quite long enough, so a second should give you plenty. Exactly, exactly. Let me figure out where we're at here. So, I've unpatched everything. So this is this, this is basically the same, you know, this, uh, it's not Tiger at all, it's just uh, it looks on the surface because it shares the same DNA, I guess, and the same knob cuts. So, so now we've got a full another part to the unit as well, which is, I guess, what, sequencing or control? Yeah, the second half of this is an, almost an entirely different thing. Uh, it's a, this is a, uh, I can move all these wires out of the way here. It's a two channel, 16 step controller. So you have capacitive touch controller where you have a pressure output in addition to on off. So you have two channels and the channels can be used I'll just turn the sound down here. You can use the channels in a couple different ways. You can use it so you have uh, a scale assigned going up, or you can play it where you're, you, the note that comes out on that step is based on what the pot is. And you have two channels, red and yellow, and then a blue channel in the middle is sort of a CV channel that's shared by each one of them. So that creates a analog de uh, decay envelope. It creates an analog CV output and also a gate length. So if you're using this two channels separately, if they're not running sequentially side by side at the same speed, you know, each channel can have a different envelope shape out based on the blue. Now this thing goes endlessly deep. The channels themselves have pitch outputs. 
They also have un, uh, quantized CV outputs. There's uh, trigger gate outs. You have inputs, you have scan inputs, which a scan input takes a CV and assigns the step based on the um, value of the CV. So zero volts coming in would go to step one. Uh, five volts would go to step 16, that type of thing. Right, okay. And that's nice if you have a sequence playing and you want to sort of have it jump around a little bit, you can do that. You obviously have your pressure out. Uh, this can generate sequences, so you can do auto-generate sequences. You can make sequences much longer than the 16 steps you have by using step jump where you say, okay, when you get to step eight, have it jump to step one 30% of the time or every fourth time you know right, that kind so of like plenty of probability stuff. exactly exactly so think of like uh trig conditions in electron stuff you can do that with all of this so the controller really goes endlessly deep and it's it's meant to integrate with the voice in a way that allows you well it's called the voltage laboratory and it's called that way because the idea is to experiment uh which is one of the reasons why we didn't normal the the voice at all it is you have to patch it but it's meant to uh play around and come up with maybe something a little new. Excellent. So um, is there any normalization between this unit and this unit, or is it? No, you do have to patch. You can patch a couple different ways. You can do it the way we're doing it, which is with the CV and gate signals. Uh, but you could also, if you wanted, you could patch MIDI out into MIDI in. If you're feeling exceptionally lazy, <laughs> you could do that. But this does have MIDI out. So if you wanted to use the CV for the Voltage Lab voice and use the MIDI out to control, say, your Tiger keyboard or something else you have, you absolutely can use this to control other things. Nice. So this is, I mean, you've, you announced it literally this week. Mm -hmm. um, what's, the, what's the ETA and pricing and all that kind of stuff? The pricing is going to be uh, 21.49 euro and you can pre-order now and they should be shipping uh, sometime in June. Oh, so pretty soon, right. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. They are on the uh, they are on the boat, as they say. As they say, Richard. Thank you so much for talking to us. Always a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much, Nick, and all my uh, Sonic State friends. Uh, thanks for hanging out.